Hi, Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft room. And today we are going to fix up some mistakes that you would think you'd never be able to fix up if you make them, but they are truly fixable. And I, oh, I'm just getting smelled up really nice before I start. Love using baby powder to set the foundation of my card before I do any Versamark and embossing powder. It just smells up your room. You have a nice stinky stink and you get to put it on your hands and enjoy the time that you're spending in your craft room. So thank you for spending this time with me just over an hour in this blizzard that we're having here in Niagara, uh, Canada side. Yes, and it is a beautiful white snowy day. So here we are. I had this set. You know I'm not buying anything for three months until April 1st, January through to April. And it has really been nice going into my stash and using these stamp sets that I haven't stamped. I would say probably one out of every stamp I've used to stamp. And these photopolymer stamps are the inexpensive stamps that you would get at any box store. They really are a nice, um, I don't know, like they're nicely produced. They're a nice photopolymer. So I was really thrilled with that. I ended up stamping one on this, uh, you know, piece of paper here to get a mask, some masking paper. And I only needed the two leaves in the top part because I just wanted to add a rose to each side of the rose in the middle. I knew I was going to die cut it with a round die cut. So I was more or less, you know, manipulating the roses to stay in that space, that round space I was going to use. So I used some gold embossing powder detailed. And, uh, yeah, you have to really watch it if you take a gigantic brush like that to get off the little specks you don't hit your image. You should really use a fine brush, but I didn't have one handy. <laughs> but I did have a pokey tool handy, so I did, you know, work with what I had, work with what I had, my friends. Thank you for watching my uh, biscuit video. I really appreciate that. I forgot to tell you. I'm going to sneak it in here. It's 15 minutes in the oven at 450. Uh, Carolyn asked me, how long do I keep it in the oven? <laughs> That's crucial, don't you think? 15 minutes, Carolyn, 15 minutes. Uh, I had some wonderful friends, especially from the South, that are used to these biscuits. And now I'm going to try my sausage biscuit with white gravy. We don't make white gravy in Canada. At least I don't. And so I'm going to give it a go this, uh, yeah, this week. After I'm done this, I am going to make some biscuits after I get the voiceover done. But that's not my card. Here's my card. Now, aren't they the prettiest little flowers you ever did see? The, the rosebuds, they're not open yet. They're just different. I just really loved hauling this out of my stash. This card is 6 by 8 when it's finished. But I had to readjust some things that I was not watching and made one big horrific mistake when I was creating this card. And I think a lot of people would have just thought, what am I going to do now? You know, it, it ran through my mind. What ran through my mind is, okay, now how am I going to fix this? <laughs> so I'm going to work with Festive Berries with my Distress Oxide inks, my Picked Raspberry. I'm just holding them up so you can kind of get the visual. Crackling campfire of the pinks. Threw that right in, didn't I? Worn lipstick. Threw that in there too. And this card is truly two cards, but I'm only giving you the one card today. Now see that right there? Do you know what that was? That was a sham that I shoved on top of the dies I was die cutting. And then I found it and I said, oh, if I do ink on paper with that, look at that beautiful image pop right out from being on top of a die. Now that's another day, another time. That is a slimline card I'm using. And there is the star of the show, that um, 
not embossing folder, but that stencil right there. Remember my last card I did with the paper stencils? Well, that's what I used to make this slimline card right there. Yeah. I was thinking, could I make these roses fit in there? But I couldn't. It would have been too jammed together. But I did use those four oxide inks over top of that stencil over there to the right. It's a paper stencil. Remember that. And then I cut out a large, single, no, nothing fancy circle around my rosebuds. I wanted to get that out. That's a 140 pound white card stock that I get at my stationery store. And I am going to just cut that little section out so I can use the paper around it for a later, you know, for sentiments or something. I do save that. And now if I would zoom out, I'm going to take you and make this 6x8 card with that stencil. That stencil that I used, that's why I put it in the edit, to make that slimline tag right there. And it was so beautiful on the outside of that paper stencil, I could not just get rid of it. I couldn't. It was impossible. I used some Tim Holtz, just some sprays on there. Yeah, it was really a nice finished um, sample for you on top of that stencil. So we're going to use that. Uh, and you can see how well used. I turn my dies over and cut into the magnets. I want to show you this also. All of a sudden I realized I'm not going to show you anything right here. <laughs> yeah. You know me. Uh, we're experimenting. That's what we're doing here and I want you to be a part of it. So here we're not going to use that slim line. But we are going to use that oval, that scalloped oval. I took out a large, uh, I don't know what you call this thing, uh, um, applicator, I guess. You know, the kind of furry end applicator that that I get. Um, I didn't get this at the dollar store. No, I didn't. I got that at Stamplicity. But they're really nice because they're large, they're round, they... They cover a large area if you wanted it to, but I just wanted the edges on here because I'm looking at the stencil that I'm going to use. Now, I mean, can you imagine that? That's just crazy. Get it? Yeah, but I didn't do that either. <laughs> surprise, surprise, you never know what I'm going to do, do you? Well, I had these beautiful Anna Griffin gold sheets. You know the ones that come with 12 by 12? and five by seven. You get both of them in the same pack. Thick as crazy, crazy. They don't crack. Beautiful. I love it. And I knew when I went to my drawer where my gold stash is, where I hide it, I knew I was going to use this and it fit beautifully. Look at that. You have to not look at those roses though for now, okay? Because that's not going to be on the front. But when I design, I like to keep all of these ideas running through my head. And I didn't like the fact that it covered up the gold. You know, if you're going to buy this expensive gold paper, uh, and I do think it's more expensive than Michael's gold paper, that's for sure. That's why I say it's a little tad uh, expensive. But uh, I'm not going to cover it all up. Not on the front. There's no way or the back or the sides. I did all four sides of this card so that's why the video is this long. I wanted to make it five layers high so I had to choose the colors I wanted to work with. I knew that uh, black was going to be one of them and I'm going to just add a little bit of that powder that's left over on top for some reason. Maybe this stink uh, was gone in my room and I just wanted to have some more. I took my half inch ATG gun and I'm putting that on the back making sure nothing's you know I have to tuck it all in because a little bit went over the edge but that's okay you just you know do what you have to do and put a little baby powder that'll help uh, where it's not sticking to your hands as much. So we have the black we have the gold oh yeah I didn't even put liquid on there which I'm surprised uh, I, I figured, you know, I pretty well knew where I wanted it to seat. And now I'm going to take off a sliver so it looks the same on each side. The right, the left side is quite narrow, but that's all right. And I'm going to have to take some off of my stencil as well. 
there was just too much on there. But I didn't want to cut into the actual design of the stencil. I just went a little bit to the edge and it worked out well. So I was super duper happy. And this card could be used for a birthday, thinking of you, friendship, uh, just about anything, I think. When, you, when we get finished, you're going to realize that this is just not, uh, you know, based around uh, the February love day. It is based around someone you care about and you want to send them a pretty card. So that's what that's based around. So let's stick it down with some liquid glue. Try not to put too much on there. And so, so far we have the stencil. We have the gold behind it. We have the black underneath it. And I just keep putting that thing in front. <laughs> but you can tell there is no way I'm going to cover that stencil up. There's no way. And, um, but you know, it's pretty to look at and it gave me some ideas. Now I needed to, okay, that's a perfect red. Let's slide that underneath there. Isn't that a beautiful red? I really like it. And I knew I needed pink because there's pink. The worn lipstick gave it that pink look. So we're got, I have to get up and go and get some pink out of my stash. There it is. I'll make some tick marks and um, I don't know what I was doing there. I apologize. You know, sometimes I just, uh, as I'm creating, if something pops up and I want to look at it or something while I'm creating, that's why I keep the mouse thing there, whatever they call that uh, square thing. So here we go. Now we have the pink. So let's get out. Oh, I'm using the quarter inch JTG. I bought all that ATG uh, 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 tape, so I'm going to move back and forth with it so that I can use it up. Um, you know, I have two quarter inch guns and I have one half inch because you, because you never know, right? You never know when you just have to grab one. Maybe one runs out before the other and I don't want to be left with uh, my gun not loaded. Oh, yes. So here we go. I'm experimenting. Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to put another layer, and that's going to be red. If you watch my tutorials, you know I love the weight of cards. I, I, it's probably why I don't, you know, use stamps. I don't ink and use stamps as a single layer uh, much, because I'm used to vintage cards and I'm used to the weight of different materials. Although I do love a nice, clean, and simple card. So uh, it's just what I choose that day to work with and what I have in my stash. I'm obviously using some liquid so I can maneuver it a wee bit, making sure those hearts are right side up. Now this is so funny. Does it matter? I'm just putting a background on it, Carol. Why are you checking that? You could have it either way, as long as you didn't have it sideways. <laughs> it would work out, wouldn't it? So let's straighten it up while we can with the trimmer. I think it looks A-OK. -okay. There, we're back to those rosebuds. And now I need to measure, make my own card base because it is 6 by 8. So I'll put an inch on there. I'll score it across, bend it over the um, original 6 by 8 piece that I cut out. So I would be doing 6 by 10, uh, 6 by 9. So I had that inch to roll over with a little gusset. I add a gusset to the top of it so that it doesn't crack as much. Now I'm going to run this through the Anna Griffith embossing folder. This will not be even, my friends. You're, I'm not going to have the same um, pattern around here. I didn't want it. I wanted it to be off. I wanted you to look at it and it just, I don't know, just let it speak for itself. So I put the embossing folder wherever it would fit. I knew the front part, you're only going to see a little bit, but you're actually going to see quite a bit when you open it, the back of it, right? This is the back you're looking at. So I did the emboss sticking up for the back and the deboss on the inside. So I'm just taking a little bit off so it, uh, you know, it, works well all the way around as far as my um, stencil is concerned. 
So here we go. I'm putting, I just wanted to get the gist of the colors. And I am going to add gold, but not, that's going to be my next card. I have, uh, I was working on another project at the same time as this card. Isn't that funny? Like a, a bigger project, and I went back and forth, you know. As I was doing something and I had this out, this machine out or whatever, I thought, you know what, I'm going to use it now and put that aside. I got out my star form stickers. I love these pin, I'll call them pin stripes. They're, they're just fine little stickers that peel off just a single teensy weensy little line. And what that does, it takes away the stark of the white card. So let's put that aside, I guess, and we're going to work with this. I have some black heart vellum. Is that not the most beautiful vellum? 8x8. Eight eight. I don't know where I got them, to be honest with you. I have a big stack of them. So um, I don't know where they've had them a long time. And I'm working it in my stash. I was thinking of doing some of this on the back of the card at the time. But then I thought, Carol, you can't cover up that uh, embossing folder because the emboss is just so crazy beautiful. So I thought, okay, here's the front. Let's work with the front. The front doesn't have a pattern. It's not embossed. It's, it's what I folded over the back embossed piece of white paper. So I don't like so much of the white showing, but I can't cut it down anymore or I ruined the back design that I had in my mind with the embossing folder. And I really hope I'm not traveling in circles here for you and that you get the drift of how I design. I know if you watch my videos you get how I design. I'm all over the place. I don't have a plan until all of a sudden that light bulb goes off in my head and I say you know what let's let's reverse and, and do this you know and because I don't have this on the card in itself oh yes I'm loving it. I'm always showing some love. I love you stopping by today and viewing my tutorial as well. So let's get out my um, Su Quang. I this is a 6x8 card, so maybe this is my 5-inch roll. I, I can't tell which roll it is. I just know it had enough on this roll to plant it right on the back where I didn't have to use the ATG. I wanted it to be flat. Um, I didn't want any warping, so it works out having the Suquin larger tape to put down. And remember, I'm working out of my stash. I, I want to make sure that I'm using products I haven't used in a long time. So here we go. You can see I have put down the thin strip of the Star Foam sticker all the way around. See, it's so thin you can hardly see it, but boy does that shine. I'm taking another one here to add to the bottom. See how nice that is? It just takes away from the white being so white. All white? You get it? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I do. I do too. I do too. So here we go. I have that white strip. Now, I, I don't like that alone. I, I There was something not right there. I thought, yes, I could leave it like that. It's nice. It gives it that little bit of extra oomph, that little detail that I look for. I'm always looking for a little extra detail when I put my cards together. And I, I did like it. But then I thought, you know what? I have a lot of these star form strips in all different designs. So I grabbed another one, and it had a zigzag to it. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do. I guess I'm going to do it after I put this on the top. And if you... Um, you want to put a little bit of glue on here. What I did was I took a little bit of glossy accents on the corners when I added my hearts. And I just touched, a when the card was finished, I touched a little bit of glossy accents in little tiny dots right close to the star form lines so that they would not lift up. And uh, I didn't want to have that shiny look on them to add them to it beforehand 
So that's what I did, and, and I'm not sure if I left it in the edit, edit, but that's what I do. As long as you stick the corners down so they don't raise up, put one maybe in the middle of a daub of the glossy accent, or white glue. White glue is great too. And here you can see I'm trying to get close enough the jagged edge, and I'm putting the jagged edge up towards my base, that, that uh, beautiful um, stencil that's going to go down. So I made the jiggity up towards the red. I thought that made a big difference then to put it down and you wouldn't be able to see it. I wanted it to stand out. So I'm going to go around with my, see on the left there, those, they come in I'd say about eight different jiggities on that one piece of paper that you can use. And don't throw out any of it. Put it back on because like I say you can put glue underneath it You'll be surprised, even if it's like just a quarter of an inch you're left with, how you can use that on a project for something. So save everything as far as the gold stickers. And as far as gold is concerned in any manner, I'm going to show you that later on as well, what I do. So here's the base of my stencil. And uh, that detailed Tim Holtz spray. I'm not sure what they call that. I will try to leave it in the description. I don't want to get up and then I my flow. I lose my flow as I'm doing the voiceover. So here you have it. I see that I'm going to use that circle with the scallop so I have to keep that in mind. And I thought, all right, I gotta finish the jiggities. I gotta put that gold jiggity strips down on the other three sides of my card base. There is when you know the back portion. So I'm just going to go around. They stick very well, but I still don't trust it because it's a sticker. And so I always add some glue to the sticker in some form, of, you know, to make sure it stays down. So I would that would be just a little bit of caution I would leave with you to not trust that for sticking, you know. And so here we go. We're coming up to the fact that you can see the jiggities all coming towards the focal point, and I'm loving it. I love a little bit of extra gold. These stickers are two dollars. You can get some for two twenty-five or two fifty at the most per package, and I think they have four if I'm right in one package. You don't just get one. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, three or four can't remember but enough that I have a lot in my stash and I love to haul them out when I'm looking to add a bit of gold to any project and then I'll put that over to the side and use it later on now doesn't that just I don't know I'm loving it I really am I was enjoying this more and more as I was creating I like the little hint of white now instead of that stark white standing out in the background because I am going to have that round circle and of course vellum oh yeah you're going to be able to see this now there's two sizes of vellum I have in my stash one is 40 pound weight and one is 20 pound weight I could not uh, for the life of me find the uh, 20 pound at tons there we go let's glue this down and you know I have that big roll of uh, glue or of the um, sequin tape on the back as well see how I'm able to maneuver that oh yeah just oof yeah oh I'm having fun there we go yes and I don't put my glue to the edge edge oh no the last thing I want is that sticky glue coming out. So hold back and just put ease it in, in there. There's the stripe. And uh, always something special about these star form gold stickers. Always something special. So let's set them aside. Now, if I had this to do again, which I don't because I did it this way, I glued that die cut to the vellum. Now, if I had to do it again, I would have found a circle that was just a tad, and I'm saying a tad bigger than that uh, circle there, you know, the white scallop, 
just a tad, and it would have been really easy to glue the edges right on to the die cut. But I didn't think of it. And so what I have to do now, once it's dry, is get my scissors under there and cut around it. Okay? Like cut around it. Which if I had I had one circle die and did what I just said, would have been quicker and cleaner looking in the end. Now, I don't, I don't waste any gold. Not this, I, I just don't. I find ways to use it. So I had all of my dies that I wanted to use. I had a set of happy. It was six different fonts of the word happy. And so I fit them on all the little gut pieces that I had. And then what I didn't have as far as a, a, a you know, a word, I went and got my Stampin' Up Heart Punch that has the three sizes of hearts. The skinny, long one, the fat one, a pudgy. Let's say pudgy one, and then the tiny one. And it punches them out all at the same time. That way I can maneuver the cardstock inside the punch to get out, you know, like say that upper left corner. I can get two small hearts punched out of that just by turning my punch upside down so I can see where I am pressing down on the punch. And I didn't have anything left over when I was finished, but a mess to put in the garbage. <laughs> Here we go. Now, I think in the last two videos you saw me do this. I saw it on a video where somebody took a Lazy Susan and they put their die cutting machine on top of it so that especially if you're sitting and doing projects, you don't have to keep getting up. You don't have to keep um, leaning over until you almost fall onto the table. And if you watched my biscuit tutorial, you know that I can't lean too far or I'm right into my work. So this Lazy Susan idea was genius, absolutely genius. So here's my Lazy Susan. There's my Big Empress, the large one. And I have a small Lazy Susan for my small mini Empress. And I'm whenever I hit a thrift store, I'm going to be getting a few more because I love this idea. Now watch this. I'm sitting up and I don't want to uh, lean over. I hope I'm sitting up. I think I am. I could be standing. I don't know. I can't see. Look at that. It comes right to me. The Lazy Susan brings it around. And there you have it. I just twirl it back. Oh, yeah. I could have three machines going at the same time, just twirling away like a ballerina, spitting those die cuts out to me, and not have to get up and maneuver or lean over or do anything. I think you understand where I'm going with this. That Lazy Susan, get down in your kitchen, my friends, and look for a Lazy Susan and put your die cutting machine on it. It'll save you time, energy, and you get to snack on something, you know, instead of having to go around the other side and lean and, oh my, this is wonderful. Just wonderful. I love it. Now, once we get all of these dies out, I have love, happy, with, I, I found a with um, die cut that I have this set. It says with sympathy. I could not find this with because I put it away with love. So my sympathy was all left alone in the bag without the width. And I was so happy that I ended up finding it and putting it in the right spot. It'll be in the right spot for a little while, you know, until I mix it up again. But look at these gorgeous fonts. Happy, happy, happy. Oh yeah. And I was happy. And then I cut this down and I took my Stampin' Up Punch and I punched me out a ton of hearts to put away. And there you have it. I really did die cut a lot of these. I put them in one of those dust bags. You know, the ones you cover your card with when you give it as a gift. You put your card inside it, then you peel back, and it's see-through. I call them dust covers. I put all of my die cuts in those uh, dust covers and set them inside the bag of the die I'm working with so that I don't have to, you know, if I'm pressed for time, they're all there, you know. I'm going to do a couple of videos to show you that I'm going to do nothing. There we go. I'm going to do nothing, but, well, I'm not going to do nothing. I could do that anytime. But 
I'm going to use just leftover stuff in all these dust covers that I have and make some cards. It takes the time away from having to die cut again. And I have bags and bags and bags of pre-die cut images of all colors that I'm going to take out and we are going to make some quick and easy cards. Yes, I did. I said it. Woo! Quick. Yes, it'll be quick. Now remember these two dies that I used for my last card, my last exploding, floating heart card? Well, I thought, I, I don't know if I'll use it, but let's cut that out of the gold. So I have some beautiful flowers, and these are beautiful. When you take all the guts out of the center of these, my friends, you're not going to know when to stop with that die cutting machine. It's going to have fumes coming out the back because you're just die cutting, die cutting, die cutting, die cutting. I love it. The only thing you have to remember is to make something with it. <laughs> Not just store it, but make some art. Oh, beauteous. I certainly do love the idea of going around your stash, you know, just getting in there and seeing what, what have I not used in years? And I mean years. And uh, new things are great. But you're going to find if you do stash cards, just working with your stash, you are going to get so excited to reuse these things because nothing's new under the sun. Everything that you see that's new, I bet you if you look back in your uh, stash, you will find something pretty close that you bought to what you love because we all love a certain idea of things, right? We love hearts. We love... You know, so new hearts come out, then we go, oh, I have something that looks like that. I'm going to use that too. I mean, it's just stimulating. It, I really love working in my stash. I do. And, you know, and I'm looking for things that I necessarily wouldn't use on certain cards, but I bought it. I must have loved it at the time because I bought it. And, uh, oh yeah, here's what I'm saying, my vacuum. We are Memory Keeper's little vacuum. You know this thing? It screws off the bottom to clean it out, and then it has a computer. Uh, it's charged by a computer thingy that goes inside your computer at the edge, and then it goes into your um, machine there, into your vacuum. And you know what? I... I once charged it and that was when I first got it and it was already charged I didn't have to so this thing has been working on that same charge and it's beautiful so um, I'm thankful I bought that now I'm getting out look at I mean there you go how many things do I have that hold powder for putting on objects I'm embossing you just saw I had the powder bag then I had the powder other thingy that uh, looks like an ice cream cone and then I have my baby powder which I love in my chili jar and we're just powdered out and instead of you know buying one and waiting until it runs out if something looks kind of new and fancy I want to get it and I don't need it that's what I'm finding so this is a set that I had from Hero Arts the heart it came with a lot of uh, sentiments for the love day in February so I remembered that I had it and you die cut the heart then it has that little strip empty in the middle it had a stamp that said you and me and you could make tons of these and put them in your dust bags for another time different colors it doesn't have to be red you could do it on white black whatever and isn't that gorgeous I didn't use it on this card I just saw it and I thought, I have to die cut that. I just have to put it in my dust bag and save it for another card. And I want to try and do some cards that aren't so long and just with a few little inspirational ideas. Now there we go. Okay, we have the vellum. We have the cutout uh, round circle, you know, the scallop. I have a ton of happy, happy, happies. So uh, let's see what I do. I'll tell you this. I'm going to jump ahead. I don't use one single happy on the front of this card. Not one. But they sure look nice. I went to my Anna, Anna, Anna Griffin um, 
oh, all these uh, sentiments because they're beautiful. They're three-dimensional, two-dimensional, first class. My friends, this says stickers, but they're not like, you know, the, the inexpensive stickers you get at your dollar store where nothing's a dollar. No, these are professionally made stickers. The paper is, you know, at least a hundred pounds that it works with. The gold is delicious. The sentiment, the fonts on them are magnificent. And I am so grateful that I bought that uh, Create Six boxes, the two of them, when I was able to join in on the Create Six with Anna Griffin. I have so many wonderful things that were stuff packed in these two big boxes. And this was one of them also, that beautiful bow. Perfect color to match my, um, my front stencil. I have that beautiful uh, three-dimensional sticker for the center. I love it. I love it. You could add more height to it with your own stickers. And then I went to my stash and I got these dots. Remember these dots? We couldn't get enough of them. Good night. We were making them in our microwaves. They were exploding in our microwaves with plastic children's things. I remember doing it, you know. None of them were perfectly round either. They kind of looked like, well, you don't want to know what they look like. They just didn't look circular. That's all. So I love this tag because... When you buy Anna Griffin items, they're perfectly centered. They're, it, it eliminates the time it takes to get a tag die, get a sentiment, make sure it's, you know, turned all the way over exact to fit inside your die. If you buy these boxes, but, but I can't because I'm buying nothing until April and I don't want to buy any more because those two boxes in Canadian funds cost me $600. The course was $400, but I'm Canadian, so the exchange, yada, yada. So I really do, uh, you know, value what I have as far as the supplies. I'm taking real good care of them and using them, of course. So I put some double-sided tape, and you know when you use double-sided tape, take the front and the back off because then they will go in the circle easier than if you kept the uh, one side with the paper on it. So take all the paper off, maneuver it around, put some tape on it to hold it also. I want this to be flat. I'm not even taking a breath. Wow, talking up a storm. I want to get this up to YouTube today. I wanted to see the stencil. It was very important. And it's a 20-pound vellum, I'm sure of it, because if it was my 40-pound paper, my friends, you wouldn't see through as well as we are right there. I have the beautiful Anna Griffin bow that matched perfectly. The sentiments are so sweet, so sweet. And I took the Doree strips, and I put them behind there, cut it off, add, added a little bit of glue, I'm sure, Yep, there we go, so I could manipulate it on top. Isn't that pretty? You have the round portion. Everything is coming together. I'm super happy. I love the stickers on the... A lot of stickers going on here, isn't there? And I love the... <coughs> excuse me, outside stickers here. I'm just putting a little bit of glue and centering that. And I am so happy. Look at that one. It's like, uh, I think it says, for my beautiful friend or something like that. I think it's wonderful. Maybe it's wonderful. My eyes aren't the same as they used to be. <laughs> yeah. And then I put some little dots that I had in my stash. But I ended up changing these out. Uh, I found them to be just a little off uh, in color. It was really dark, but it wasn't the same reds. You can see me look in there. Yikes, i got to take it off. And I have to change it up. Just that little bit of detail for me means so much. I want it to be spot on as I can get it. I keep all my supplies around me so that I'm smothered with all this gorgeousness of supplies. And I took out my pearls. You know, I love working with pearls. If there's a hole like this, a pearl's going in it. 
for sure. That is the vintage in me. I just love the romanticness. Is that a word? The romanticness of this card. I put a dot, you know, five, six dots, just enough so it doesn't dry on me. And then I add my beautiful pearls all the way around. And what a difference a pearl makes. <laughs> oh, it's for my wonderful friend. And look at the beautiful font. These fonts are all different. That's why your eye is drawn to them. They're beauteous. I left the circular tag that says, You are so sweet. I left that plain. I didn't do anything on the edges of these stickers because the elegance is there without having... Here, I'm changing it up. I'm going, please don't rip, please don't rip. Oh, yeah. <sighs> I could take a breath. And then you'll see that it did make a difference to put a different uh, hue of color on there. And it's just a little glue dot, but your little glue dots, my friend, make a huge difference. I wanted it to just pop right off, and it did. It did what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to be the same red as the bottom red layer to our card. And yet it's still vintagey. Now here it is. Here it is, my friends. Here's the big mistake. Hold your breath and get ready for it. I'm putting this heart on, and, I'm, and I stopped. And I said, why is the bottom of this so thick? Why is this so thick? I don't get it. This shouldn't be thick. Um, it's upside down. What's happening? So I turned it around. <laughs> I did it a hundred times. Um, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. On one of the turns, I knew you got to cut it off. Here, just cut it off. Take a big breath and smile and say, this isn't going to matter whatsoever. And then I remembered this technique. And I was so thankful. Gail had showed me this technique in the cards that she makes. And it came back to my remembrance. And I said, I don't have to worry. All you have to do, my friends, if you make this mistake and put something upside down, instead of ripping it, tearing it, and trying to turn that base around, cut it right off. Just cut it. Sever it. Put it aside. Now take the back portion and take your, tr uh, your embossing um, trimmer, you know, the... Uh, Okay, take your scoreboard and score it at one inch. Just see how it's perfect? You just cut it off so you know they're both the perfect height and width. You know that. So go to your scoreboard and make a one inch score in the top. And see those strips that would have been on the top? Now they're on the bottom and they give me the stability to set this card up like an easel without the ease, you know? It's not an easel, it's just a folding card. You've scored it one inch on the top, you put your glue and your liquid glue on the top one inch, and you literally put your base on top of it. Now, what's going to happen with this because you did that? You're going to lose some inside space. Yes, you're not going to have the full 6 by 8 you're going to lose one inch as far as the height is concerned. Not the width, you have the same width, but the height is going to be one inch less to design with. So let's go do that, let's design. And isn't that fabulous? For people like me that forget to keep looking at your card and make sure you didn't put your base upside down. That's important, keep looking to see when you flip your card. Oh yeah, I'm thinking here. All right, what do I have to do now? Let's get at her. Uh, make sure that you've put the glue down. There it is. There it is. And I need to have that on the base of the card. If you turn it around, the one to the left is my actual image. So here I go. I grab my scoring board. I grab the score tool and I go over one inch. Nice and soft at first. You don't want to break in. And then I glue it and I add it just like that. I don't turn it around and add it to the back. You know, this is going to be a perfectly flat card for my envelope. Perfectly flat. There's going to be no bend in it. 
whatsoever. Yes, there's my vacuum. I'm vacuuming up on my scoreboard. All those easy pieces that get inside the score lines. That vacuum is, it'll suck the rings off your fingers, my friends. Keep your rings so they're not loose or you're going to lose them. Yes, you will. That's one great sucking vacuum machine for our craft room. So here we go. I'm putting the glue on here and then I'm going to put the lid on. Now watch this. I'm going to set that down. Not like that. Don't bend it. Oh, my shattered nerves. Yes, just like that. Perfect. Just put it on the back so they're front and back solid and look at that. The problem solved, my friends. The problem is solved. Get those scissors out of your hand, Carol, or you're going to do major damage. So there you have it. A perfect flat card with so much uh, ease. See, there it is. And then when you open it up, ta-da! You have an easel card without the ease. Just the ease. It's called the O card. The easel card without the ease. It's flat and you don't you only lose one inch of space as far as working up and down. Okay, sideways you have the same space. Uh, if that makes sense. I don't know. Maybe maybe you don't. I'm so confused now because I'm watching what I'm doing here. Okay, let's you saw what I did. You have a nice flat card that opens up and it fits beautifully in your envelope because it's flat. Huh. Let's work past that and get out some hearts. Okay, now this came with a set that I bought years ago. It was one of those card kits and it was had to do with hearts. And so I put them in a bag. And that's why I know in this set it had ovals, it had all kinds of goodness, all kinds of goodness. And one of them was, it's called Sprinkled. Um, sprinkled with Love, I think it was. And they cut out little hearts and little circles so that you can make shaker cards. See how the guts there? They came out of my vellum. And then you put the heart over top. I almost didn't leave enough space, but it worked. So now I have an embedded piece of, of the um, vellum inside there I have to take out. It did rip, but I was able to use it. Didn't bother me. Rips don't bother me. Like straight tears you can work with. It's not bad at all. So I'm loving it. And there you go, a scalloped heart. Let's move on. Whew, wasn't that fun? And that was a major mistake, except for the fact now I just have a smaller space by an inch that score mark. I loved it. So I have my heart in the vellum. I have my love that I'm going to put in black. I have the U that's going to be gold. And I have 562,000 little hearts in black and gold and uh, mixed up all there in my dust bag because I collect all these and I'm just designing. You don't want to put much because you have a really nice emboss. That embossing folder. You can tell which way I manipulated the folder. So let's get cracking as they would say in the chicken barnyard and we are going to make something lovely. Now here's where we get to use. Remember I bought all those bags of sticky specs? I'm always looking for something that you can stick to the back of fine die cuts like fine die cuts and I don't get all of the sticky on my fingers which transfers onto my cardstock and another thing I want to tell you uh, if you have clear glue like the white that dries clear you can put it on the back of your vellum you're not gonna, if it's good vellum you're not going to see that line it's going to dry solid and that's what I did there I just put it around the edge as close as I could get it put something heavy on there and set it aside now, there's our sticky specs. Let's get out one sheet. I'm so excited. I haven't used this yet, and I wanted you to be the first to see me use it. Now, the sticky specs. Now, what they say to do is just peel it back. Put your uh, die. I'm trying to get this. It's impossible. Don't even try. If something sticks to it, leave it there. Then put the lid back on. You know that you peel back. Put it on. Grab it. I mean, is that... 
I was right, I'm telling you, I was singing the hallelujah chorus on this one. I finally found a sticky speck. There's billions of these little circles on that one sheet right there, and they transfer, and they give you time before they dry completely to lift it up and make it straight. I am in love with these strips. I am in love. So I thought, okay, I'm going to see how much of these billion little circles of sticky will stick to the U that's left over from the love. Okay, we got it now. And see how much stickiness I get to apply when I put the U down. Now, I had some on my nails, so I just got out my, um, I got a paper towel, and then I got out my, what do they call that thing? It's called Undo It. And I just grabbed a baby wipe, put a little bit of the undo it, squeezed it out, took that sticky right off my nails, and it was fabulous. And I just had to apply two little dots underneath the U. And I wanted to make sure that on my sticky specks, I used those little specks, as many as I could. And if you have fine die cuts, my friends, that's it. I have all the other sticky things that they tell you it sticks to fine detailed die cuts. This is the best I have found. I am putting my Carol approval on this, the sticky specs. I am. I love it. And you get, I don't know, three or four sheets to a pack. They're inexpensive. And look at that. And I wanted to add something that was flat to the back of my embossed card. So come on, sticky specs, move down. Give it some room. Rub it now. You just have to rub it with your hand. These micro little thingies uh, of glue, those round balls that are micro round, stick perfectly. Look at that. Nothing stuck to my hands. Nothing balled up at all on my paper. So now I'm going to go over. And you see how lightly I did that. And I'm going to grab it. You have to be careful, though, if, the, if it's very detailed. Make sure that you bend the paper that's behind. The gold paper needs to bend. There you go. Oh, yeah. Let's situate this. Just move it over so the flower looks thicker. Put it down. This is my wedding paper that has that sheen to it. So it's on the flat white embossing folder back. Then I have a little bit of glue to put my gray uh, pearl on there. I thought gray would be just in between the white and the black on the inside of the card. And look at that. That's all you need. A beautiful emboss, a beautiful flower die cut, those sticky specks. Amazing. Amazing. That's the word I use. And look at. Now I just need the same color as my oxide strip on the bottom of this space. And wasn't that a lifesaver? By just taking that, cutting it off, cutting it straight, scoring an inch, and putting it straight on the back, straight on the back, flat. And it saves the day. And look at my little flower on there. I love it. I love it. I love this thin strip. I'm going to get my little glue dot, put it on there. I'm using my glue dots. I mean, everything in my stash is getting used, my friends. And... There you have the inside, the beautiful backside, and now we need to move forward. Oh, yeah, let's get that envelope maker out because we're going to make the most beautiful envelope you have ever seen. And I'm going to show you something that you are going to be so happy and so inspired when you see how I did this. It is wonderful. So my card is 6 by 8 Now, this uh, envelope maker goes to 6 by 8 and a half. But I didn't want that much room on the inside. I wanted my card to slide in flush, just, just nicely. And if you have a 6x8 card, the envelope maker does consider the fact it needs a tiny bit of room. So I went down to the 11x11. 11 11. I'm pretty sure that's what I had to cut it by. Let's see. 11x11, 11 11, and then at 4 and 7 eighths, you're going to, you know, you're going to score on the scoreboard. And look at that match. Look at the match on that. I could hardly craft. I'm not kidding. Just the beauteousness of it. I had to look at the, there's my sticky 
specs and putting it back in there. I just think this is the best invention ever. I wish I had a thought of it because these billion little round dots work perfect on the finest of fine detailed dyes, my friend. Finest of fine. So here we go. Oh, let's get this envelope started. You want to make sure that you remember to do, if you like that rounded edge, to put it towards the back of your teal oval there and pounce down so all your edges are rounded. And now we're going to, if I find, how, you know, I haven't done this in so long. I'm thinking, I can't remember how to do an envelope. Oh, yeah, so here we go again. I would say the first time you score it, don't take the rounded off. It's hard to see the four and seven eighths, but I did it. I did it. And here we go. Score it. If it doesn't reach all the way to the bottom, just uh, fold it and score it, and then you'll be able to see the fold to put it up against that little pointed thing up there that you're going to work with. See how I just folded it? And look at that beautiful color. That was out of a 12 by 12 pack I got at Michael's with all these different pinks. Have, you know, all the, from light to dark. And I picked, I chose that one. I love it. I love everything about my card today. And I hope you do too. I hope somehow something rubbed off and was a little inspired. Insp it inspired you. How's that? A little bit to uh, be able to fix things and add little details. The details are the fun things about making a card. Wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, I am loving this so far. Now, what I want to show you is with your envelope maker, go up one notch so it's not six by eight. You're now going to cut out a white piece at six by seven and a half. You're going to cut it at your big paper, 10 and 3 quarters by 10 and 3 quarters, and you're going to score it at 4 and 7 eighths, the same way you did the the pink one. It's the same score mark. But you know, you, you know where I'm going with this. It's a tad smaller envelope. It's one size up on your scoreboard. So just go up and then make another one, then cut it off. And look at that. You have that beautiful um, inside decoration. I chose to make it white because I'm going to um, use gold embossing powder, but, and cut it off. We don't need three strips. You don't want to make your envelope any thicker than it needs to be, especially if the card is six by eight and the measuring on the envelope maker is six by eight, you know? As much paper as you can get away with not putting on it is great. So I took my, you know, my cutter here, my trimmer. I trimmed off, um, I need the middle guts there. So I trimmed off all of the flaps right there. Get it off there. Now I'll trim this down even more. And remind, I'm reminding you it's one up from the size, whatever size you're making. Look up on the score, on the envelope maker and make one that is smaller and then you're going to get the inside look at that it's perfect you couldn't get this quicker and easier if you want to now i'm going to mustache again and i'm getting out the anna griffin uh glue my tape runner i haven't used it and it comes in a box with two refills and two that are already filled and how awesome is that and I'm loving it. It goes on nicely. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to use my stash. So I put this inside the envelope. Now, here's another thing, my friends. Make sure when you're folding the edges, you fold the right ones. I don't know why. I always turn it around and see which side, the up or the down, looks better. I always do that before I put strips on it to close it. And it ended up being the other way around. Don't ask me why, but that's the way it turned out. I took out my lips. Oh, yeah. And then it dropped. <laughs> I didn't even realize I put it in the edit. It, it fell. So I thought, oh, I can just turn that around because I'm going to, um, you know, I just need the top portion. But you can see I couldn't do that. So I had to do it again. And then I took out my Tuesday technique, to technique, Tuesday, 
I'll get that for you. This uh, stamp set that was all sewing machine stitches. It was all sewing machine stitches. So I grabbed my lips and I embossed those and there's all the stitches. I chose that wonkety one right there, the second one up, and then I chose the beautiful flower that's missing. You can see that flower edge. I have all of these on my uh, Singer Heritage sewing machine. I have all these and all I had to do was grab, what is it, Technique Tuesday stamps? Now these are old, you can tell. They've already yellowed, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is a beautiful photopolymer, and they stamped super well the first time. Then I went to my lip stamps there, and I took out Love You, and it already has the nice, um, um, you know, would have been a die cut, the flag, the flag on it. And uh, it's beauteous, and I put it underneath the lips. I love my Fiskars. I love this positioner. I really do. This is gorgeous. It's one of the staples for my craft room. I love it. I can manipulate it, and I have all the lines to make it even. And there you have it, my friends. Yeah, let's just pour it on. <laughs> Woo, pour it on there. I'm having so much fun. Can't stand myself. So I have Love You underneath the lips. I have the stitching. This is going to be the flap for the inside of this gorgeous, gorgeous envelope that we made together. And I'm hoping that you love it as much as I did. So there it is. Look at And then, do I want it? No. You want that bigger one on the, on the outside, I think. See how you have to check it there? It was right, right there. This is what I had to do, right there. Then I put the double-sided tape on the right and the left flap right there. You don't need a lot of it. Just start at the top. Don't go too high on it. Otherwise, you're not going to have, you don't need that sticky there, if you know what I mean. So here we go. Let's get, I'm going to run that uh, flap through my uh, Xyron tape thing right there so it doesn't have any lines that you can see you know, from glue, from tape runner or my ATG gun. I'm just going to grab my uh, beautiful Xyron machine, run it through. This, I think, is the 9-inch. And then I'm going to peel it off. And I'm going, no liquid glue, because liquid glue will show through, my friends. You don't want to put liquid glue on this. You don't want those lines to show when you're making a flap for the inside of your envelope. Then I'm going to nicely just press it into the actual uh, glue, you know, the tape, the sticky stuff. I'm going to press it in there, and then we are going to seat it on the inside upper flap. So when you open up this envelope, you're going to love it because it's just so different. You're not going to get this at a store. You're just not. You're not going to be able to order this card, my friends. You're not going to find it out there because when we make cards, they're especially done by us. You know, it's a specialty item and I'm loving it. So here we go. Take the top off. And doesn't that look different? <laughs> in a good way. It's different in a good way. I'm loving it. I love the fact you joined me today. May I say that as always. I know this tutorial is rather long. Most of mine are. But when I get into my stash, I think I'm going to make some cards that aren't as long. Now here we go. I grabbed a white out of my stash. Right, Look at them. I had all of these flowers that I die cut in days gone past, days gone by. And it just fits out of there. We have the white inside. Tell me that's not lovely. That's just lovely. It... it has the vintage element to it. It has the sweetness to it. It has all kinds of techniques, all kinds of fun things in here. And we made it together, my friends. We made it together. Now I need a pearl, so I'm going to use a light gray because it's white and black and the mid-tone would be gray. So I'm going to find a small one and grab, um, I don't know if I use liquid glue or glue dot. Probably liquid glue. I'm going to guess on that. I don't know. But, oh no, I can see it. It is a glue dot. 
I'm looking on the um, timeline and I can see that it is a glue dot. Oh, well, my friends, that's it. We made an envelope today. We made the inside of the envelope with a pretty flap when it opens up. I took one of my vellum outside pieces and I hid it behind the flower. You know this one that ripped? Because you're not going to see that. I grabbed some more of my Zots dots, my mini dots, and I put it behind this lovely, lovely uh, vellum heart that I had while I was die cutting. I die cut a lot of them, but this one happened to rip on me. That doesn't bother me because rip means hide. The two are the same word, rip, hide, in craft language. That's what you do. And there you have the front. Uh, you're not going to mail this out, of course. It's probably going to be hand-delivered or in a box or a bag with a gift. But I think it's very pretty. I think it is a little part, and it's an extension of us, isn't it? Your cards are an extension of you, and my cards are an extension of my creativity. And I certainly love this. I'm going to love the next two um, projects that I'm going to edit and voice over for you. I think I'll take a little hour break and have some lunch and enjoy the 80,000 pounds of snow that's pounding down outside my windows here. It looks gorgeous. I'm going to try and take a picture of it for you at the end of my video. I'm going to I have to take some pictures of this card and envelope, so why not? I'll let you see some of the beautifulness if you don't live in a snow area. As always, please have a blessed week, and thank you. Your time is valuable, I realize that, and you chose to spend it with me today, and uh, I appreciate that. Please let me know in the comments what inspired you with the creating of this card and envelope. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, do have a blessed week and I'll see you on the next tutorial. Take care everybody.